Welcome to 5 Games 5 Minutes from www.aconelectron.co.uk Hobgoblin 2 is a sideways scrolling platform game which has a very arcade machine feel to it. This time it's not an orb that's been stolen but rather a power so evil has befallen the land of Altaurus that only a one-to-one -one battle with the Hobgoblin Lord is required. Rather like the original Hobgoblin game, you need to battle through some 50 plus screens, zapping and splatting peasants, ghosts, succubi and harpies. What's a bit different is that when you collect a weapon, you do not immediately switch to it, but instead choose whether or not to switch by pressing space. Another welcome addition is you can now climb and descend the ladders. Other than that, the game will delight fans of the original, and perhaps even some shoot 'em up fans. The same tactics in mastering weight, move and fire combinations are needed for most enemies, but the big boss is quite old school arcade fare, played out against just a 40 second time limit. Great game, apart from the nonsense at the top of the screen. Frankenstein 2000 is a combination of 6 or 7 colourful sub-games, with more the feel of the film in a space than anything to do with the infamous monster. You control a submarine inside its body and go on various ridiculous missions which will apparently bring it back to life. Truth be told, I'm far from convinced. Inside the monster's throat you have to shoot frogs, inside its lung you have to shoot cigarette packets, inside its stomach you collect bacon and avoid eggs. Are you getting the idea yet? The game is very, very silly. A little difference in proceedings is brought about by the exploration levels. The heart is one of these. Here you navigate through a maze and torpedo the heart to, apparently, inject life. Finally you reach the brain and have to manoeuvre around an electrified circuit to collect 8 electrons. The game is not only silly, but it's almost ridiculously easy. None of the mindless shooting bits put up anything like the challenge you'd expect, and I completed this game on my first go. Still, it's easy and it's colourful, so young children will like it, even if nobody else does. Forget alien zapping and blasting for two moments. In Breakthrough, you forgo all this in favour of breaking through a number of blocks. You've got to do two things. Firstly, you've got to find a flashing key. Secondly, you've got to get to the door which opens when you pick that flashing key up. Other than that, the game is actually quite difficult to describe. You're a wizard and you're in an area full of red and cyan blocks. You can destroy red blocks by standing in front of them and pressing return. Similarly, you can create those same red blocks by standing in front of an empty space and pressing return. You can jump up and destroy blocks and create them not only directly in front of you, but also one character space up above you, too. That's all that there is to it. You destroy the blocks getting in the way, and you create pathways to the key in the door. You avoid the spiders and the swooping bat things by judicious use of block creation skills. The game's not exactly fast, but then, if it were, it really wouldn't work in the way that it does. The only irk I've found is that your wizard often goes one step too far in the direction of travel sometimes. Repton is one of the Akon Electron's famous characters. He's what Mario is to Nintendo. In his first outing here, he's pitted in 12 screens of diamonds, eggs and boulders. The Repton game demands thought. Each screen needs to be completed in a particular order. You'll also need some arcade skill to be able to deal with the monsters that hatch from the eggs. You're meant to be able to crush them with boulders, but this first game has an annoying bug that means that this sometimes doesn't work the way it should, with the boulder sometimes falling right through the monster you want it to crush. To see the map of the area, you need to collect the map icon, and to open safes, you need to collect the key icon. All screens can be completed without losing a life, and there's a lot of fun to be had in working out exactly how so. Repton spawned countless sequels and clones, but this one started them all, and it's perhaps the most affectionately remembered by most people who played it at the time. It's still in an engaging and an engrossing game, 20 years on. Boffin is a highly regarded puzzle game, featuring very aesthetic levels and even more imaginative creatures to avoid. You can move left, right and jump and when you are mid-flight you can raise your umbrella Mary Poppins style to float gently to earth. Much better than crashing into the ground and losing a life. You have the simple sounding mission on each screen to collect the five horseshoes and petri dishes and then get to the owl. Early levels are devoid of other life and progress is reasonably easy. Later levels introduce the creatures, including the giant puffer blimps that need to be flattened by poking them in the head, and the spiders which need to be outran. Watch out too for trampolines and springboards, these catapult you around the playing area. Boffin is quite a likeable game because of all the smooth animation. 
Some of the screen layouts will have you fox for many hours. The Electron version has 25 caves and is peculiarly also known as Boffin version 2, as there's a completely separate Boffin version 1 for the BBC Micro only.